Good morning everybody. Welcome to Painted Dog TV with myself and Andrew on camera this morning everybody. You will notice that I'm moving at quite a pace currently in the dark and the reason for that was uh, in comms with Kevin five minutes ago having found tracks of a male lion heading up this way from Mumba Dam and uh, he was just standing by here close to Lamunda and Krip, uh, hoping to hear the lions roaring. And a couple minutes later, has just reported that the black rhino cow, cow, calf, and now bull, everybody, are busy interacting with the pride here at Lamunda and Krip. An insane sighting that's busy unfolding. Just a couple of minutes away from us here, everybody. Now, we're going to have to come in quite slowly when we get close. First of all, because of the current situation with these two species interacting. But at the same time, the black rhino are quite nervous of the vehicles. So, we'll see what we see. The black rhino might eventually just spook and move off. But the lions are there as well, everyone. And it's... Yeah, it's exciting stuff. I want to try and get there as quickly as possible. So a very warm welcome to our pack members that have joined us this morning on our pack drive. Very grateful to be out here with you all this morning. Obviously we, oh, there's a Janet. There was a Janet. Where'd he go? Oh dear, long grass. That was a brief sighting of a genet. Um, yeah, so obviously we didn't go out yesterday afternoon, everybody. It was raining. Um, so very chuffed to be out here with you all this morning. Still very overcast. Okay, copy that. Are you exactly? Okay, copy. Turn that off. Okay, everybody, we're getting very close now. They're just down here at the crypt. Andrew's just turned the light. There's the black rhino. Just walking across the road here, everyone. Are you picking it up? Just moving away now into the thick bush. So the lions, I believe, everybody, are very close to the crypt itself, the little water hole here. As I said before, we've got to be as quiet as possible and try. Be that. So I as I was saying earlier everybody just got to be very very tentative with our approach here and we're also keeping the lights off to try and limit the disturbance here so apologies for the low light conditions I can see a couple of the lions up ahead on the road there now what I thought Kevin said earlier was that, that the black rhino bull had turned up at a coming in to go as far as you can um, I should be on your left but apparently it was a white rhino bull that came here to join up with the black rhino Just off to your left now, there were 
Yeah, I saw one of the black rhino heads south from here briefly. So the lion's on the road here in front of us, everybody, just coming out here now. I think the rhino might have given up because of the two vehicles being here. I think they've moved off. Exciting. My goodness. I think she took that little two track that goes in here. That's where I saw the lot. Well, I saw one black rhino going down there. Was that the cow? Just chatting to Kevin here, everybody, about uh, what's just unfolded. And so when Kevin first arrived, he saw the black rhino cow and calf standing exactly where we're parked now. And they darted off towards the riverbed here, Kevin initially thinking that they'd run off from him. But in fact, they were just charging towards the lions, which you see here now lying on the road. And shortly after that, a white rhino bull came onto the scene and they had a bit of an altercation the black rhino and the white rhino. Amazing to see that sort of behavior between the two different species, but it usually doesn't end in any aggression. It's just a bit of a coming together, sniffing and smelling each other out, huffing and puffing, and then they go their separate ways, which happened immediately after they had come together. The bull, the white rhino bull moved off, but apparently came back again, and presumably came back to come and investigate lions here but he's now moved off and so have the black rhino cow and calf that moved into the thick tree line here to the south of us it's it's very windy this morning so rhino will often do that as well naturally will just push into thick bush when the wind is blowing the way it is this morning because the wind disrupts their sense of hearing and sense of smell they feel a bit more comfortable in the thicker bush where the wind gets broken up and these lionesses all just sitting here completely unfazed with all of the rhino action that's just happened. They actually look quite full, these lionesses. At least the one I can see here on the road. Oh, and there's a mouse that just darted across the road. So big and small here, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to try that, Kevin. Cool. Amazing. I wonder where the mail is. Because those tracks of that mail are definitely from last night, on top of the rain. Look at that belly now, everybody. You can see it quite full. There's that lioness has just laid down. So they've definitely eaten, and presumably that's why they've then ended up here at the waterhole. They've come to drink here after their meal. Yeah, there's two just beyond her, off the road there. Right, folks, what are we going to do? So we're just going to quietly creep back up this little two-track that runs into the tree line here behind us and just see if we don't get lucky with another look at these black rhino. Kevin says he's just going to hang around here with the pride while we go and try our luck with the black rhino. We'll always be able to just come straight back here with the pride after. So Andrew's just asked me if he should keep the light off, the light that sits on the vehicle behind me to light me up. And we're just gonna keep that off for the time being because it'll unsettle the rhino.
of different game paths. That That's the uh, Black Rhino car, car stuff. Lots of Black Rhino um, sort of routes that could have been taken there, everybody. Lots of little game paths that cut through the forest of trees here. We'll just stay on the road, of course. We're not never going to go really crashing through the bush after these Black Rhino because of how unsettling that would be for them. You can see tracks of rhino on the road here, but I think those tracks might actually be of that white rhino bull. Look like, almost like a drag mark. Maybe that bull was scent marking here. But we'll just follow this road, do the loop, see if we have any luck, and then go back to the lionesses. Wow, what a start to our morning. Unreal black rhino and lions in the same sighting. Phenomenal. Jeez, the game viewing here on this reserve is. People, yeah, I, you know, I talk to the locals here in this town, everybody. Um, a lot of them, you know, naturalists, guides, um, veterinarians, and a lot of them don't know all too much about the Reed Spread Reserve. And uh, I don't think half of them believe me when I tell them the sightings we see here. It really is incredible, the game viewing on this property. How privileged we are to explore this place on a regular basis. What a moment for Kevin, you know, Kevin being one of the, well, the longest standing homeowner here on the Reed Sprout Game Reserve. What an amazing moment for him. Somebody who dedicates pretty much 80% of his time to the management of this property and who, yeah, just Clearly is still so passionate, still absolutely loves being out in the bush. Oh, this black runner didn't come out here. I reckon they must have hugged the riverbed there, everybody. Didn't see them there. You never know, they might have cut through, we might still catch them here on our left, coming towards the road here. <clears throat> right, now I have a moment. I'll quickly catch up with our pack members on the private channel. Good morning, Mary, Carol, Wendy, Elsa, Becky, Ian, Deneen, Betty, Barbara, Jan, good morning. Good morning, Laurie. Good morning, Mauricia. Lovely to have all of you with us here. Good morning, Connie. Hope you're well. Thank you for joining us. I hope you all got to see a bit of that black rhino before she left. So that was the cow, everybody, that we saw there briefly, the black rhino cow. Incredible. Now I read in the comments there, Someone mentioning that the dogs have gone next door. Yeah, that's news to me. I didn't know that. Oh well. 
That's unfortunate. But to be completely honest with you, not entirely surprising. last night. I'm just going to stop here next to Kevin and chat to him about the dogs quickly. Perfect. Oh well, thank you. The dogs? What? I've, I've just seen somebody commenting about them being next door. I didn't know about that. Yeah, when I was following them on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. They were down in the corner there. You watched them actually go through. Okay. Cheapest, so they're moving, eh? Not that far. That's a nice place. Yeah. But, but they hang around on the outside for quite a bit. Um, Garth has said that Jake can go there with his vehicle, but if I know his vehicle, but he won't be much on the face of this, but I think they'll come back. Yeah. And they know exactly where those females are. Well, they also know how to get in there. Yeah. And if they're anywhere near there, then um, what's his name? Uh, no. Sent me. Nice okay, Cole, did he send it to you? Okay, lekker. Well, hopefully they're just doing a bit of exploring and they'll be back soon. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the first comments about the elephants was from Piet Steinberg. Mm -mm. He moved it, but I, I then spoke to him privately. So I said, don't put stuff on that. Mm. He's getting that little addition from David. Also not worth commenting on it. I, I just mm. normally delete them. Mm. Just tired of it, really. Then I get over it. But you know, people go to the south and Piet's planted some trees around the horse track. He said he saw the bull walk past and just pop full of trees. And so now he's convinced that it's there. And then he talked to the staff and they say, Yeah, no, it's the bull who's pushing trees out. And they said, No, all the elephants push trees out. And they've been pushing trees out long before the bull came. Correct. Fun and games. I thought about doing that too. Mm. Mm. I might do that after this. Thanks, Kev. Very interesting chatting to Kevin there, everybody, about those African wild dogs and what they got up to. Oh, hello, you beauties. Some very, very fat, happy girls. Oh man, they are so beautiful, these lionesses. Incredible hunters. So I think also with the weather conditions, everybody last night, because this wind has been howling since yesterday, since yesterday morning, in fact, these lionesses would have definitely taken advantage of the weather and they've clearly been successful with a hunt last night. There's no blood on any of their faces so that's a couple of hours ago already that they finished up whatever it was that they brought down. They've already had time to groom themselves, groom each other, come to the waterhole here for a drink and are now quite settled. So it looks like all six are here. I can count, yeah, all six are here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And all six of them have raised bellies. Most of them lying down on their side, and you can see these bellies moving up and down. They are well fed. Uh, morning, the Pride are currently stationary at Lemunda and Crip. There was a brief sighting of Black Rhino Cow and Calf in the same position. They've headed south, no more visual. Now the Pride are at Lemunda and Crip. Soon to be three vehicles here. I was saying to Kevin earlier, everybody, I wonder where the mail lines are. There were certainly tracks of one mail heading this general direction that I was tracking earlier. But they must have missed these lionesses entirely. These lionesses, I'm guessing, killed something sort of directly west from us here. They came from Ledwood last night heading south. And they must have come south along the western side of the Deep Slurt River. Kevin drove to this position coming on the other side of the river and had no tracks of them. So that's the direction they must have used. And the mail lines came from the south and must have gone slightly east. Right, I'm just going to move up ahead here everybody. We've got Jake's coming in to join us in the sighting here. I just want him to be able to see the lionesses as well. Hello girls. Don't worry. I'm not going to disturb you too much. That's a big belly. Oh. Little piddle. Obviously when they've had a big feed like they have last night, uh, their body does produce a lot of urine and feces straight after a big meal like that. And sometimes they're so bloated, these lines, that they don't even bother standing up like this female's just done here. They'll often just urinate where they sleep. But they usually will get up to defecate. of a lioness huddle starting to form 
there under the trees. It's a rather chilly morning. So lying close to one another, almost on top of one another like that, keeps them warm. Yes, sorry, Wendy. So going back to my chat now with Kevin about the wild dogs. He was actually with them, following them, uh, I think two mornings ago. And um, there's a section along the eastern fence of the reserve uh, where there's a big drainage line. And uh, it's not too far from Siakwe Dam. And Kevin watched the watch the dogs actually go under the fence at that point and uh, yeah unfortunately they've now moved on to the Blue Canyon Conservancy we are in constant comms with the management there we have a really good relationship with them and they said that they last saw the dogs uh, somewhere around the southern fence of the Blue Canyon Conservancy so that's now a good five kilometers away from where they re were released at the BOMA um, now that's natural for dogs to do that, to explore, you know, their surroundings. They cover massive distances. And as I said earlier, not surprising that they didn't stay on the Root Sprat Reserve and that they'd have expanded their horizons, basically. The only hope we have is that they, they well, we know they're well aware of the females in the BOMA. And that also is, you know, it's become a little bit of a home for them, that that spot having lived there for so long so we just hope now that they will return eventually back towards that boma and uh, I suspect that if they do start coming back there's a high probability we will then release the females and hope that they bond and pretty much hold each other down to this area we're hoping that mating will still occur and that uh, and that they then might seek out den sites here on the Reed Spread Game Reserve. You must remember there are lions on both reserves, so obviously the pride we're sitting with here and our three males, but then also a pride with two males on the Blue Canyon Conservancy where the wild dogs are currently. So lions are a big deterrence to wild dogs. That's a known fact. Wild dogs will always try and avoid lions as much as they can. And so the one concern is that they might possibly move on entirely to get away from these lions. Um, and if you think about females and when they come to denning, they definitely will always try and find a den site area where there's less activity of lion. Uh, I worked with a lot of different packs of wild dogs in my time in the Sabi Sand and well the Sabi Sand and Greater Kruger so up in the Timbavati and we'd often find the females trying to do that they would go to parts of the reserve where the lions were least active before digging up you know an old Alfalk burrow or Wartog burrow uh, to then give birth to her puppies in there so yeah it's all just sort of speculation um, and hope at the moment that they'll stick around. But there's a very high chance that they'll move on. But only time will tell. We'll have to wait and see what happens with the wild dogs. We obviously all hope they stick around. They're very safe here. Well, they're safe from human prosecution if they stay here. But lions are always a risk to wild dogs, always a threat. One of the other things that Kevin brought up was that uh, Cole from the Endangered Wildlife Trust has sent Kevin a recording of a wild dog contact call, um, apparently a very clear one, um, a good quality sound clip, which Kevin will also now employ uh, if the dogs do come a bit closer to the fence line. 
um, and potentially come back towards the reed sprite. We will actually then start playing that woo call to try and encourage them to come back up towards where the females are on the boma. We of course have a collar on one of those male wild dogs so we are well aware of where they are uh, just about every single day. Using the telemetry and, and using the GPS locations of those dogs we'll be able to pick up when they're coming back this direction if they do come back and if they start coming closer to us sort of in range of where we'll be able to play this you know this audio clip of a contact call then we hope that we'll be able to lure them back onto the reed sprite and just you know keep moving back towards the boma and bring them back up towards the females. Copy. Unfortunately, everybody, I have to report that it is starting to drizzle out here. Hopefully it won't intensify, but as you are all aware, if we get too much rain, we are unfortunately have to gonna, have, gonna have to go off air and uh, take cover with the equipment here on the vehicle. But we'll see how it goes. Away rain. Well, 
as you can imagine, everybody, these lionesses aren't going to go anywhere anytime soon. They've got full bellies. They've got water close by if they did need it. And now with the rain starting to come in and the cold temperatures, they'll probably just spend their whole day here on the bank of the Deep Slurt River. If the rain intensifies, they'll probably just push into the cover of the trees here. Try and keep themselves warm and dry as best as they can. So earlier, everybody, I, I did a little loop to see if I could potentially find the black rhino crown calf again. <clears throat> Didn't see any sign of them on that road, but did think that they might have possibly come back down towards the Deep Slurt River here. And so I think what I'm going to do is just take a drive up along the edge of the river here, hoping that the gremlins will stay away. We might have some gremlins just for the first couple of minutes as I go through the thick vegetation here at the start of this little road that cuts through here. Um, but once we get through that thick section, it opens up quite nicely to a big sodic area not far from us here. And I just want to go through that area and just see if we don't have any luck with the black rhino again. It's been wonderful catching up with the pride again everybody and obviously the excitement with that black rhino being here too but these girls aren't going anywhere they're fast asleep and i think we've had all sighting here so i think let's carry on and see if we have any luck with the black rhino hopefully this rain is going to go away Bye girls, stay warm. I'm leaving Kevin with the pride at Lemunda and Krip.
see the black rhino tracks here. This is where they came from. Right, so just moving in towards this very dense woodland area here on the edge of the river, everybody. So again, I do apologize if we have a breakup in signal, but it won't last long. I'm not going to stay in here. Out of the side. We'll see you there. It's very light here. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head north from here. And then the camera won't be facing the incoming rain. I'll just see how it goes.
Are we live? Right, everybody. So we've come out of deepest, darkest Africa there. I do believe you have picture back. No, no signs of those two black rhino in there, everybody. They didn't come through that very thick woodland there. Presumably just taking cover from the miserable weather that's kicked in here now. Still quite a strong breeze and light drizzle where we are. We are getting reports from FC, however, that the rain is intensifying and that is not very far from where we are right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn away from FC and head north and uh, yeah, just try and escape the weather, everybody, so that we can try to stay live with you for as long as possible. The rain is determined to interfere with our drives at the moment. Go north for now, you want to and see how it goes. I won't be going far though. So Justin comes again, everybody, with the FC. And uh, yeah, the weather's getting worse. But like I say, let's head north, see how it goes. I wanted to go north anyway along the edge of the deep slurt here, the western side, to see if I could find any signs of leopard. And so I'm going to continue with that plan until I feel that the weather's just getting too intense. And then we'll cover up the camera and I tail at home, everybody. Do apologize, but not much we can do about the weather, I'm afraid. asked Andrew yes. if you wouldn't mind please thank you apparently there's some foliage in the way as well we can just have a look there thanks ever so much was that nice enough Carol I threw in a lot of smiles there Andrew's direction as well hope that worked This is uh, weather for movies and popcorn right now, everybody. I hope you've all got your popcorn out. And I don't want to give up yet, guys, because very often this can just blow over. And where we are right now, it's not all that terrible. So we now are heading north. Let me just see how we go.
So we're back now on Mamba Krunkelpat, the very, very bouncy Mamba Krunkelpat. Andrew's favorite. Don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun on the back seat, everybody. The back seat has got absolutely no support whatsoever. It's like just this thin piece of foam. So your bum and your kidneys certainly take a pounding on Mamba Krunkle Putt if you're on camera. It is a beautiful road. Good leopard road. No tracks of a leopard just yet. take that camera trap back out. Uh, are we using it at the moment at the moment? Yeah. Okay, well it won't stay there for too long. Let's say again. So I'll try set up another No, that's cool, don't worry. The dogs are more important right now. It's cool, we'll leave it there. But um, I was just gonna say that as soon as we can, we need to go set up that camera trap again. Yeah, in that reed spray drainage line where it meets the sun slit. See if we can get more footage of Kudu Krip 2 3. Yes, indeed, Shannon. Go and go and make some popcorn, and I'll uh, I'll find you a leopard in the meantime. Perfect weather to see a leopard still on the move, still active. It's not heavy rain. Nice, cool conditions. There's a hungry leopard out here, everybody. I can assure you, it's busy moving around hunting. Absolutely gapping it out of the bush here. Wow. What spooked them? Or is it just zebra stallions fighting? Now the zebra have gone, everybody. I don't know if you heard that. I first heard the crashing through the trees and then could hear their hooves running. Something, something's up. Unfortunately, very, very thick here. But if there is a predator, you would think that it's either the male lions or a leopard that spooked the zebra. Like I said, it could have been stallions fighting. 
and chasing each other around at high speed. Don't see predator tracks on the road, but it's definitely zebra. I can see their fresh tracks here. I think it could be zebra fighting. Look at the road here, everybody. Look at the disturbance in the soil here. Gee whiz. Oh. My legs have stiffened up in the cold. Yeah, these zebra were fighting. That's what it is. It's not a predator. can see where the zebra stallions have twisted and turned here as they were trying to kick and bite one another here on the road. I don't want to with the rain. Just tell you honor that please. It's an amazing thing watching zebra stallions fight. It's also another photograph I'm always trying to capture. Is when two stallions come at one another and they go up on their back legs with their front legs sort of kicking towards one another. It's an amazing photograph to capture. Incredible watching these fights. And they can turn quite nasty, these fights between stallions biting each other, often bite tops of ears off, bite each other's tails. They've got a nasty kick on them as well. Now a predator will often take advantage of, you know, that particular moment where the stallions are, stallions are fighting because they're so absorbed in their fight that they won't see the predator coming. Now you can see it's happened all over here. I think this is where they had their last little squabble before they then took off after one another and that's when I heard them. There's a good news. A couple of good news here, everybody. Two blue wildebeest. That's quite nice. I don't see them all that often. Don't, don't run away, silly things. Oh, there's three of them. Wonderful. So just moving into thick bush, taking cover There's from the wind. In the pod, so. The good news, everybody, for the time being, and I don't want to jinx it, but I'm going to say it anyway. 
while well, I tap my head is that our plan has worked for now. The rain has stopped. Ah, some impala. Hanging out with the wildebeest. Safety in numbers. Right, so it's this road that I wanted to check this morning, everybody. This is where we caught the pregnant female leopard on the camera trap just a bit further along here and I suspect that that female and Kudu Krip 2-3 female their two territories overlap here overlap here close to the Deep Slurt River which is now to our right and so I just wanted to come up along here this morning and see if I can't find any signs of either of those two leopards every possibility of male leopard activity in this area as well, the big male, the blowbunk male, and the young male, the Witgat male. He was seen at the very top end of this road by all of us up in the tree. I'm hoping he's still around. Very true, Mary. I haven't had a lot of sightings of the wildebeest and I'm quite sad that I haven't seen more of the calves. I love watching wildebeest calves. <laughs> they're very cute, a lot of fun to watch and they're still little, full of energy. But, you know, that said as well, we don't have a very large population of wildebeest here. On the reed spread, I think a lot of them have been thinned out by the lions.
Be quiet, radios. I just switched the vehicle off, everybody, because I thought I'd heard something. It's like an alarm call. We sit here and listen for a moment longer. I hope you don't mind, everybody. I'm just going to mark my territory. Thanks so much, Becky. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your rest. We'll see you soon. We'll let you know if we find that leopard. giraffe tracks on the road here. Very, very fresh. That would be nice to find these giraffe. Maybe they're feeding somewhere up here close to the road. Their tracks are certainly going this direction.
just spotted some zebra, everybody. A little ways off. But quite pretty. Standing, ah, with the giraffe we were tracking. It's not easy to see the giraffe. It's very well hidden behind the zebra, behind some trees. But quite a nice sized dazzle of zebra here. I can see four now in picture, but there's another one off to their far left, and it's actually one our side of the road here that's still coming towards us. They'll be loving these weather conditions. Nice cool temperatures, not having to worry too much about the heat or having to find water. And we'll most likely actually be getting a lot of water on the grass that they're feeding on. Do you need me to go forward, Andrew? Mm -hmm. You okay there? Mm. We like a good bum. Such a striking animal. An animal whose tail never stops. It's amazing. They must be one of the animals that are bothered by flies the most out here. Constantly having to swat flies off their rear end. Ah, Carol's just pointed out, Andrew, that you still haven't done the Bums of Africa reel. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> He's on it, Carol. I heard monkeys alarm calling now, everybody. That's why I'm so quiet. I'm just trying to listen. It's quite difficult though because the wind's just picked up again. There's definitely monkeys along calling. And those monkeys, everybody, are in the Deep Slurt River south of us here. Let's give that a shot. Ah, oh, they're the giraffe legs. They're coming closer. Awesome. Don't mind me, everybody. I'm just having a big old stretch. Oh, sheepers, sorry about that. It was much needed, though. The body's stiffening up in this cold weather. All right, beautiful zebras and giraffe. We have monkeys alarm calling, so bye. We'll see you later. Right now. I don't know how lucky we're going to be with the gremlins, everybody. Oh, there's that other zebra that was sneaking up on me. Um, because where those monkeys are alarm calling, folks, is, like I say, down in the Deep Slurt River. Um, oh, he's got a big wound on his right rump. 
Look at that. He's got his own little harem here that they were that we're coming up to join the other zebra here, I think. Beautiful shot there. Okay, love you, bye. Right, so folks, I am going to do my level best to try and go figure out who's upset the monkeys. Because of where we are, because it's in the deep split river, there's a very, very high chance it's a leopard. But we have to go up before we can come back south in the deep slurt river. We'll gain access to this river a little bit further up ahead here. And then we just got to hope that the gremlins don't hang about and we can continue through the deep slurt river towards where those monkeys are long calling. But it's definitely worth a shot. So gotta hope the rain stays away. Jolly good. Just uh, getting an update from Jana back at FC. She says that the weather has cleared up nicely back at camp. That's always a good sign because most of the weather comes from that end towards us. Right. leopard tracks there everybody going down towards the deep slurt river they don't look super fresh however her tracks there's some rain on top of her tracks but that could be the rain that's just come this morning but uh, yeah she's headed from the road here towards this riverbed there's also tracks now of some white rhino very fresh from this morning heading down towards the riverbed here too Gremlins, behave. of kudu bulls just set up here. Oh, he is a monster. Did you from your sleep? Look at that, eh? Frozen. Just staring us down.
แล้วปิดป่วยDo anything to this tree. <laughs> Trying my best impression of a bull elephant. Okay, fine. You win. Huh? <sighs> yeah, we're gonna try it. Hopefully, we don't roll down into the river. <sighs> oh, there you go. Bit of morning exercise for me, there, folks. Okay, we're gonna try squeeze around there. I did manage to break the main branch. Success. Very nice. Very nice. Right. So the monkey alarm calls everybody. We're south of us. So we're going to start heading south now. Some very old leopard tracks here too, going north of a female. We haven't been down in here for quite. It's definitely leopard activity here at the moment. Have to stay with them for now. Oh, 
Ach nein, Mann. Is about as useful as trying to chop a tree down with a <laughs> she said this right. Have given birth to three cubs. Drive the car through. Good job. Good job. Right. You try.
seeing lots of civet tracks down here in the riverbed today but we are getting closer everybody to where I believe those monkeys were somewhere very close by here now So, folks, it was close by to where we are now that the monkeys were alarm calling that they'd seen a predator. Still haven't had any tracks of a leopard in here yet. It's just so beautiful being in here, though. love this riverbed.
just saw tracks of something crossing the river here that caught my eye. But it's um, tracks of a nyala that crossed there. The tracks in the soft sand always look so much bigger. It's another little road that comes down into the river here. Perhaps that predator was walking along this road. <laughs> hearing any more alarm calls everybody but of course it was a while ago now since we heard the first monkey alarm calls. Now if it is a leopard what it'll usually do is move away quite quickly. The alarm calls. Trying to get neutral again as fast as possible while it tries to hunt. Right, well, no luck there. Still quite an adventure. Got my gym session in. And uh, always beautiful exploring the Deep Slurt River. Well, for the last bit of time we have remaining, everybody, I'm just going to slowly meander up to Seskunt Krip and just see, you never know. The predator that disturbed the monkeys might have headed that way, but it's always a good bet for general game for rhino. 
we'll head up there quickly and see what we discover. Good night, Betty. Thanks for joining us. Hope you get a good night's rest. We'll see you soon. Just a reminder for those of you that are still with us, everybody, the keyword rolls over to this morning because, of course, we didn't have our drive yesterday. The keyword is thirsty. Want to get your hands on that high resolution image? Please submit the keyword thirsty, and there'll be a new keyword this afternoon, which I will be announcing. This is where the lionesses came from. So they made their kill somewhere around here. There's tracks of them going up and down here. We're not very far from where they're currently sleeping. The Munduring Crip is only, I don't know, eight, nine hundred yards further south of us here, folks. So presumably then they've made their kill somewhere up here, closer to Seskun Crip. There were no tracks of them in the riverbed. So they didn't make that kill in the riverbed. They must have made it up here on the bank somewhere here. Perhaps the monkeys spotted a leopard investigating the remains of the carcass. The remains of that kill that the lions had. Leopards being very opportunistic will very often scavenge as well. So that's a possibility. see the lioness's tracks here quite nicely everybody. So that's where they came from. So it's perhaps behind uh, Seskun Crip where they made their kill. That's what the tracks indicate here now but it's always lovely to see beautiful clear lion prints in the soft sand. Last station, go again. Very cool.
Cheers, Ian. It's a great pleasure. It's wonderful having you with us, but it's always a lot of fun for us, I assure you. I'm very grateful that the rain stayed away just enough for us to have a beautiful morning here on the Reed Sprague Game Reserve. Of course, a wonderful sighting of the black rhino, the lionesses, some wildebeest, zebra, giraffe, big kudu bull, and Gareth and Andrew having fun in the riverbed. Yeah. Not too far from Seskan Crypt now, everybody. See if anyone's here having a drink. Quite evidently, nobody drinking here right now, folks. Just want to have a look and see if I don't see any tracks. See the little frog.
copy. How's it now? How's it now? <clears throat> right, not too much activity here recently. This looks like just a wildebeest that's come past here this morning. And some rhino tracks that look like possibly from last night that came to drink. And one sad little frog that lost his life in the water hole. Good night, Mauricia. Thanks for joining us. Sleep well. We will certainly see you again soon. Hopefully, the rain will clear up today, guys, and we won't be interrupted this afternoon. I will be back out again this afternoon for another pack drive. Looking forward to it. It's quite a lot for us to follow up on. The male cheetahs have just been located on the eastern fence line of Blobunk. We would definitely love to try and find them this afternoon. But the herd of elephants was also seen this morning. The male lions have just been located. And of course we know where the pride is. So lots for us to try and show you this afternoon everybody. So please do join us, weather permitting. No rhinos hanging about here for us at the moment. Right, well everybody, it's been a fantastic morning. Andrew and I are now going to slowly start making our way back towards our camp for a hot cup of coffee. Hope that all of you have a wonderful day, wonderful evening, wherever you are in the world. And like I say, folks, I hope that you can all come back and join us again this afternoon. I'm very excited with our new schedule to have lots of pack drives at the beginning of the week. And of course, the pack drive on Sunday afternoons will still keep going ahead. Tell all your friends about us. Tell them all about the amazing wildlife here on the Reed Sprite Game Reserve. Thanks everybody. We're going to say goodbye. Be well, keep safe, have fun. Don't do anything I wouldn't do or do. I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.